Welcome, my friends. This is Elevens is with Lisa, and um, I'm Lisa Louise Cook. Get your favorite cuppa. We are going to have some fun today. We're going to be talking about a subject that may not, on the first glance, look like it's all about genealogy, but of course, everything wraps around back to genealogy, doesn't it? It certainly does around here. Um, <clears throat> this is a topic that I have personally been really interested in trying to learn more about. And uh, once I did all my homework, I thought my gems need to know this too. So today we're going to talk about VPNs. And uh, let's jump right into it and figure out what these things are, what they can do for us, what's the advantages, how do you get this set up? Uh, how does the whole thing work? We're going to take care of that today. So um, I am going to jump right over here. Hello why I'm using a VPN. And that is the question of the day. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it or not. Uh, I had heard about VPNs. I was getting concerned about online privacy and security. And um, <clears throat> I was talking with my brother-in-law, who worked for Microsoft for practically his entire career uh, from the very early days. And I said, what do you think? He's like, oh, yeah, I just put that up last week. <laughs> so he had just um, put together his own VPN on his computers and his devices. And so I said, OK, great. So I got his advice and um, I decided to still do my own homework because I really I really want to understand what I'm getting into. You do, too. Right. Any anytime we do something to ourselves, to our computers, to the things that we, that uh, matter to us. We want to make sure we understand what's going on. And so that's why I did a bunch of homework and I thought, okay, I am going to make this available to you. So uh, the show notes have been published already. They're at genealogygems.com slash elevenses. So if you are a premium member, you go there and also you can download this entire show notes thing as a cheat sheet. So if you're like me, you're on your computer a lot, right? So we're doing genealogy, we're doing uh, just everyday communications, you know, whether it's personally or professionally, uh, we're certainly doing a lot of online shopping. Uh, okay, pretty much everything seems to be happening on our computer. And it's interesting, so much more is happening on our phone and our tablet. Um, it's, gosh, I think about when I first started doing my podcast and my website, and everybody was on desktop. And uh, as the years went by, all of a sudden, I saw those numbers start shifting to smart devices. So we're doing more of more of this on a lot of different devices. But across them all, we're concerned about privacy and security. And even if you feel like, well, I'm not doing anything that really needs to be hidden or that I'm concerned about, you never know, you could be doing your banking tomorrow, right? Or you could be sending your social security number um, to somebody because you've got a, a, a contract to do something with them or whatever it is. Uh, and you know what, you just have a right to privacy. So the idea that there are entities snooping and watching, right, lurking, they don't need to be doing that. So there's a lot that you can do. This There's no one full um, safe thing that you can do. There is not one thing that's going to absolutely shut off everybody, but a VPN can make a big difference. So what is a VPN? Okay, it's a virtual private network. Now, when I first heard this, I was thinking, oh gosh, I'm going to have to set up a new computer or server in my house. That sounds really complicated. You don't have to do that, okay? So what I want to talk to you about in this uh, session to get together today here on the show is what a VPN actually does, where it is, okay? My top reasons why I'm using a VPN myself um, and the top features that you're going to want to be looking for when you shop for a VPN because there are lots of different ones out there. And I want to, of course, tell you which one I picked because I know that's going to be one of the questions I'm going to get certainly here on the live chat. Um, and I want to share with you a bonus feature of VPNs that I was not aware of when I first started this, but I'm super excited about. I think you will be too. So we'll talk about that. And I will show you how to set up a VPN and with very little if no tech experience. Now I say little because you kind of have to know how to click 
and point, right? You, you need to know basically what a browser is and how to install things. Um, that's about it. So I'm going to show you how this process works. So we'll just take all the mystery out of it. And one of the reasons I picked this topic to talk about and just to pursue myself is that it is a really hot tech trend. And I wanted to find out what was going on out there. VPNs are a, uh, a definitely a top trend right now. Although, if you look at their history, they first started uh, kind of coming into being back well into the 1990s. But of course, these days, they're really so much more accessible to all of us. And according to the top tech blogs that are out there, VPN usage, get this, my friends, in the U.S., jumped by 41% between March 13th and March 23rd of 2021, just a couple of weeks. And that's expected to really surge. Okay, so we said this was a virtual private network. Okay, so what does a VPN do? Well, it, it helps prevent snooping. So the way it is right now, you have your computer, your mobile device, and when you do activity on those devices, you send it through your internet service provider. We'll call that an ISP, just to keep it easy so I'm not stumbling over myself. And the ISP is communicating this data and sending it to wherever you want to go. It also sees all of it. Um, so a VPN sends your data over this encrypted internet server. It's their server and it's encrypted. So. The analogy I think that works really well here is that if you had a postcard and you wrote a postcard to your dear friend or your relative and you put it in the mail, who could see it? Well, the Snoopy postman could read it and then he takes it to the post office and then all the workers on their break are reading your, your postcard and then they're mailing it and then the people on the other end are reading it. You know, there's a lot of people and a lot of, I guess, and when it comes to technology, a lot of entities that get in touch with your data in even in a split second um, before the intended recipient gets it, okay? So we kind of don't want to do all of our interactions online like it was a handwritten postcard, fully accessible. In fact, when you think about it, in our genealogy world, we're very careful to protect the identity of living people on our family tree, aren't we? So if we're doing that, Gosh, we ought to be doing that for just our everyday activity and our own personal data. So what the VPN does, it's like it takes it and it slides that postcard into an envelope, gives you have a key and you lock it and you hand it to the VPN and it sends it through an encrypted tunnel. It gets, it travels through their server. Nobody can see it because it's inside the envelope. And when it gets to the intended recipient, which might be a website, might be your cousin who you're e emailing, uh, whoever it is, it could be the genealogy website that you're working with. They have a key on their end. This process allows them to be the one to open it and nobody else. So all those Snoopy's lose in the middle <laughs> get eliminated, okay? So that's kind of a nice thing. What it's really doing is it's creating a tunnel for your data. So it can't be seen along the way by government agencies or hackers or even your internet service provider, your ISP. Even though they're sending it, they can't read it. In fact, the VPN can't either because it doesn't have the key. You're the one who sends it. You're sending it through this tunnel, in a sense, off to a side route through one of the VPN's servers of your choice, which we'll talk more about. And then once it gets to the other end, the intended recipient, the website, the person that you're emailing, whoever it is, they can open it, okay? So that's kind of nice. I mean, it'd be nice to kind of travel your data through a very private route. Here's the important thing here. Normally, your ISP keeps activity logs. Okay, so all this personal stuff, here you are covering the names of your living relatives and your family tree. It's all been seen. It's all out there. It's all being recorded in activity logs, including banking things that you're doing and other kind of more sensitive things. So um, normally the ISP is keeping these activity logs. Well, the VPN doesn't. 
And a good VPN has no mechanism for doing that. It has no setup for that. And they can be audited to ensure that that's the case. So without a connection log, without an activity log, if the government or a hacker or somebody else, you know, let's say a government agency or a criminal age, uh, investigator comes and says, we need your logs, there's nothing to hand over. So <laughs> there is no record to hand over. You have privacy in what you did. Kind of like the old days, huh? <laughs> so that's an important feature. It's also making your identity private as well. Since every device that you're using, <clears throat> oh, it's time for a sip, hang on. Every device that you're using has its own IP address, okay? Your phone, your computer, that device can be traced back to you. That's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> But a VPN routes your connection through one of, hopefully they have thousands of different servers. And that's one of the key things to look for in a VPN. You wanna have lots of different options so that it's just your data could be going anywhere, who knows? And it's gonna go through this tunnel, it's encrypted so it's private. It's gonna hide your IP address and it actually replaces it with one of the VPN's IP addresses of the server that you selected. So that's how the privacy part happens. So I want to tell you the top reasons that I decided to use a VPN. Now, if you think about your computing, it's really in layers, okay? So there's the layer of you are using a device and it's internet service provider. Then you're going to use a browser, right, within that device and you're going to be doing your searching and that kind of thing. Um, well, there's a lot of different layers to computing, and so there's no one way to be completely private. But my goal has always been to slow it down as much as possible, okay? We've talked about this before here on this show, and uh, I've got other videos that you can watch here at Genealogy Gems YouTube channel that really help you understand kind of that whole online mindset. So this is one of those tools kind of in the privacy and security toolkit. And that's how we want to kind of think about it. So a VPN adds a really nice layer of privacy to your activity on each of your devices. And that's what we're striving for. It also has some really great added benefits that we'll be talking about. And besides, my mother, my brother-in-law told me to do it. So when I called him and said, what do you think? He's like, yes, you need one. Okay, let me just, just do it. Lisa, and I'm like, so he told me which one he was using. I still did all my own homework. I think you should do your own homework. Watching this show is part of doing your own homework. And I'm hopefully going to be able to give you lots of great information to help you speed that process way up. We don't all need to be spending uh, thousands of hours doing it. But in the end, I did actually end up using the same VPN as my brother-in-law. Um, but I knew he had done his homework too, so that made me feel better. So here's the top reasons why I decided that it was worth using a VPN. Um, I want to be able to use public Wi-Fi safely. So think of all the places where public Wi-Fi is available to you. And you could be going to the library to do some research or an archive. You're going to your favorite coffee shop and you're checking your phone. Um, me, I, you know, up until a year ago, I was traveling all the time for speaking engagements and constantly at airports and hotels and venues and conference centers. And they had public Wi-Fi. Um, if you're out on a trip, I saw some folks were on the road today watching live. And if you're out visiting an ancestral location or doing some research, you know, my gosh, it'd be really nice to be able to use the public Wi-Fi. If you're going on vacation, you know, even from your home Wi-Fi, you're still not totally safe. Have you ever looked at, uh, to turn your Wi-Fi on and, and you see all your neighbor's Wi-Fi's listed? Okay, so people driving by can see those too. So public Wi-Fi is really convenient. Um, and when I'm out and about, if I use my phone as my hotspot, which I could do that, it's got a personal hotspot on my iPhone, I'm still, I'm using my cellular data and I'm worse using all my battery. And I'm noticing more and more, of course, the older my phone gets, the battery is draining more and more. So why not be able to use the public Wi-Fi, which isn't gonna drain my battery, isn't going to 
um, slow things down and eat up all my cellular data. So it'd be nice to be able to take advantage of that, right? The thing is, hackers, they don't actually, it turns out, I, I don't know how to do this, but there are, the hackers, they say, don't need a lot of expertise in computing to be able to break in to a public Wi-Fi. So they can easily gain access to passwords and financial details and emails and all that kind of stuff. The VPN puts a stop to that so that you can actually be in a public place using the public Wi-Fi and they can't tell it's your device. They can't see that it's you. You're going through a totally different server in your online connection to get to that public Wi-Fi. So it keeps you private. The second reason that I decided to use eVPN is um, I just I want my privacy as much as I can get it, at least hang on to it. And I don't want to be tracked by an, my ISP, whatever I'm using. So your ISP can see everything that you're doing. We talked about the activity logs. So if you're doing stuff, it's actually tracking that and putting it in activity logs. In the US, now I did a little research on this and I'm sure it changes on a regular daily basis, but here in the US, ISPs can legally sell your data to ad companies. And if you're in the UK, I know we have viewers uh, in the UK and Australia and Canada, and I'm not sure about Canada, it was harder to find some information on that, but I saw several articles talking about that in the UK and Australia, ISPs are required, required to keep logs of the websites that you're visiting, the apps that you use, and they have to keep them for around a year to make them available if they're requested. So the government, corporations, websites, they potentially can surveil your data and even harvest it to do things like send you advertising, right? And do other things as well, which we'll, we'll touch on. So there's two ways that, oh, I got a little typo there. <laughs> There's two ways that a VPN cam can make your online activity private and secure. So we talked about that tunnel, okay? So think of it as the tunneling. No one can see the data that, the data that you're sending is coming from you. And there's also encryption in that. One of the things you're gonna look for in a VPN is something called AES-256. It's just a certain grade, a certain level um, of encryption. I'm not an encryption expert, but I get it that there's some different levels of types of things they can do. And this locks your messages. That's the lock part, the key part. So the website delivering the data doesn't have the key and only the recipient does, such as the website that you're trying to communicate with. So I'm gonna have a link to a video in the show notes to sh if you wanted to learn more about that and kind of geek out on that. Um, I, I, I read some articles on this. Um, Dan Pomerantz, who's the uh, co-founder of ExpressVPN, he was talking to TechRadar.com. He says, many of those companies, they know your identity and they might store and resell those data about you about without your knowledge or your approval. So why is that the case? Even when you're using an HTTPS and you might have been wondering, well, I'm going to only secure websites. What's the problem? Well, it's because there's a technology called DNS and SNI. They transmit the data in plain text. And because the pipe operators can see the destination of your traffic. So there's other stuff programmed into all of this that still make it possible for them to see who you are. The third reason that I decided to use a VPN was I want the best deals when I'm shopping and we're shopping a lot more online. Certainly, um, when I was out traveling, I was constantly buying tickets for airline flights and booking hotels and, ho and car rentals and all that kind of stuff. Have you been noticing lately that more and more websites are asking you to allow them to know your location? There's reasons for that. Part of that is about how they deliver their service or their deals, okay? So some websites offer you a different deal based on your location. And uh, an example of this would be a, a streaming service like Spotify. So if you were coming from a different location, they might offer you a different price or a different um, special. The airline industry. I think about how many times I went to book a flight and I would look at it and go, well, I'm kind of, 
I'm undecided. I don't know if I want to take that one. And I'll, I'll check back this evening. I come back. Oh, it's up $20. Okay, the next day, it's up $20. Every time I clicked it, it's up $20. So that could be a strategy on the part of an airline or a, um, a website to, to try to get you to get that sense, this is urgent, you need to buy now because the price is going up. But they're doing that because they know who you are. They, they know where you're located. And it's very possible if you were to be coming through a server in a very different location, you would be getting a, back to the original price. You never know. So th that technology is out there and it's very feasible. And if you've ever experienced it, you know what I'm talking about. So with a VPN, you can select your location and you can actually change your location at any time that you want, any server that you're using so that you remain private. You're much more likely to see that fair real price. So uh, when I was looking for a VPN, there were, I have a, like a checklist of stuff that I think we really have to keep in mind to make sure that you get the right one. Turns out there's a lot of VPNs out there. In fact, some of them are free, but remember this, my friends, nothing is free. <laughs> there is a price to pay for free. So it's important to know what the features are so you can kind of have that checklist. Uh, I'll have that for you in the show notes as well, but let's take a quick look at it. So the VPN that I chose has um, over 3,000 servers in 160 different VPN server locations and in 94 countries. So the chances of me being able to um, get the best deals and be able to get wherever I need to go is really good. And that's what you want to look for is lots of servers in different locations. And of course, you want fast speed. One of the best ways to see how this really affects you where you are is to try one. And um, you can usually test it out, see how it works. I have been thrilled at how fast I can't even tell the difference with the VPN that I'm using. Uh, remember the best encryption. So you're looking for that word encryption as you're doing, you're looking through the, the site that you're considering. And AES 256 is one to be looking for. The other thing is, is to just be aware we've got lots of different devices. Okay, so and if you're like me, you've got maybe a Windows computer, I've got a Windows desktop, the Windows laptop, I, but I'm all Apple on mobile. So my tablet, my iPad, my phone, those are Apple. You also could use a VPN on your smart TV, right? Because that has an internet connection. And it is communicating data, whether you know it or not. All the devices that you have that are connected to the internet are sending this data and using your ISP, telling whatever the other end is, who you are and where you are. So um, you want as much flexibility as you can. Make a list of the stuff that you're using and then make sure that the site that you're using, the VPN you're gonna use is gonna have a service for all of those and apps for all of those different devices. Also, I thought it was really important to get 24-7 support. And I'm not just talking about a bot on a chat that says, oh, hi, how are you? And then, you know, it's just trying to take keywords that you're typing in in your question to figure out what you want. Um, I want a live person. <laughs> and I think if you're particularly if you don't feel like you're a real techie person, this is super, super important because I got to tell you, at least the one I'm using it was so it was so easy. It, I actually didn't need help, but I did have a question and I used the live chat and it was instantaneous. So it was really nice. It made me feel confident. Okay, I'm, I can do this, you know, and if I have a question, they are there, they will answer it. Uh, easy to use. Okay, so all you have to, you should be able just to fire up the app, whether it's on your computer or on your phone. And with one tap, you should be able to make the connection. If it's more complicated than that, you're on the wrong VPN. <laughs> Okay, because it really doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. It should also be really easy and obvious how to change the servers. And I'm going to show you how I do that on the one that I'm using. Um, you, if you try a different one and you test it out, definitely try switching the servers and just make sure that it's just a tap or two away and that you can easily figure out which one you're on. Okay, it should be really obvious. 
of course, we're, we're striving for privacy here. That's the goal. So we should feel like we can trust the one that we're picking. Um, and so make sure as you're reading through, and they, they should have their own privacy policy okay, on their site. And it should be really simple, plain English to read. And it should mention they don't keep logs. That's what you're looking for. They're not keeping activity logs like your ISP provider does. And the VPN, now the one I picked, I, I was really impressed they were audited. They were audited to show they didn't have a setup for doing logs, that they indeed are not doing logs, and um, that they were highly rated in terms of the privacy protocols that they have in place. So that made me feel a little bit better. And secure, okay, so check their ratings. When you search for apps, or you just do a Google search for VPN, you typically can see how many stars that they're getting. But more importantly, is look and see how many users gave the stars. Have you ever gone to Amazon and you're looking at a product and you see, you know, oh my gosh, it has this top review or it has a one star review. Well, it turns out it was one person who had a bad day. So just double check and look and see how many people are actually keeping this a five-star rating. The other thing I did was I did a lot of research looking at tech blogs and, and believe it or not, there's folks out there that all they do is like review and report on VPNs. So um, I definitely thought it was important to get one that was on that list of top rated VPNs that they've kind of vetted. And um, so some of the sites I like to look for, uh, CNET is pretty, um, Resp uh, what do you call it, reliable in terms of they are an online reviewing website and they'll, The Verge, The Wired, you know, if they're showing up on these sites and they're highly rated, then you can feel pretty good about that as well. Um, so you're wondering, okay, which one did I choose? Um, I feel really good about it. The one that I did after doing all my homework, I went with ExpressVPN. Now, ExpressVPN is popular and you've probably heard of it. And in and it's funny, at first I was thinking, yeah, but that's, the, I hear about that one a lot, so I'm not, I don't want to just go with the one that they push in front of you. But in reality, it is top rated amongst all those different tech reviewers. Um, I couldn't believe how many five stars they had, how many people are using it. So there was just a lot. In fact, as I went through my checklist, they literally hit everything that I was looking for. And um, the more I looked, the more I was surprised how much variation there was. And I, I remember I told you, I'm going to tell you the big bonus feature that I love. And this was one of the areas that Ex ExpressVPN absolutely shines at. So of course, I checked back with my brother and I was like, Bob, what, what did you end up going with? He's like ExpressVPN. And he had actually had it recommended to him by somebody that he trusted as well. So he's been using it, I've been using it, and I've been really happy with it. Um, certainly, if you want to do more of your own homework, you can use my checklist to make sure that the ones that you're looking at hit that spot. This is the price point, about $12.95 a month is their regular retail price. And that's, um, I think, pretty in line with most of them. So after I've been using this for a while now before I wanted to do the show and tell you about it, because I really wanted to be sure that I liked it. So of course, I reached out to them and I asked ExpressVPN if they would put together a special deal for you guys, because I was going to talk about it. And I want to make sure that you know that uh, you're getting the best deal. So in fact, this is a better deal than I got. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. Um, but I'm really happy that that you guys are going to get it. So um, I did sign up as an affiliate with them. So the beauty of this is, is that if you decide, and you go with whichever one you feel really good about, if you decide to go with ExpressVPN, you are supporting the free show here, Love and Sis with Lisa. You're also getting a really good deal. You're probably getting the best deal out there on ExpressVPN. So they put it together with their 12-month package, and you get three months free, which is nice. And it comes out to uh, around $8 a month. So that's a pretty good deal. And um, I think you're going to find that it actually kind of pays for itself in a moment when I tell you about the bonus, this bonus thing that I found. So three months free, get the 12 month package. And the beauty of this was it had a 30 day money back guarantee. I was prepared to do that if I didn't like it, or if I started using it and said, this is too slow. And if it's slow, 
you can check a different server. You might not be on the right server, but the beauty of this one was it actually picks what it believes will be the fastest server for where you are. So that was very convenient and indeed it was super fast. I can't tell the difference. In fact, one of the downsides that people have been concerned about when it comes to VPNs is speed. Is it gonna slow me down? And you've probably heard that many ISP providers will throttle your service particularly if you're streaming and doing things like that. It's very possible that going through a VPN server is actually going to speed that up for you because it's the ISP doesn't know that that's coming from you. When you can. Not okay. Really. So you might find that if you, if you are having a bit of slowing, particularly when it comes to uh, the streaming, then check it out because do the 30 day trial and see if it actually speeds it up for you. It might. So um, you can go to expressvpn.com slash genealogy gems. Of course, I'll have the link and all that good stuff in the show notes for you. So here's this bonus feature. I think this is really cool. It gives you access to regionally specific online content. Okay, what does that mean? Well, this is um, something particularly that ExpressVPN is really good at. Not all VPNs can do this well or do it as completely as they do. But what happens is streaming. So what are you doing a lot on your phones and your tablets and your computers? You're streaming content. And um, this is actually regionally specific. So what that means is when you log on, it goes, oh, well, there's Lisa and she's on her ISP and she's coming out of uh, the Dallas Fort Worth area. Here's the content she can watch on Netflix. Here's the content she can watch on Hulu or whatever the service is that you're using. And here's the deal. Here's what she's going to have to pay coming from her location. So it turns out if you were coming from a different location, you might have access to different content. I thought this was pretty interesting. Websites and apps, they might block or restrict your access based on your location. So you could get more content from the subscriptions that you already have. If you have Netflix, if you're doing Disney Plus or Hulu or HBO Max, ITV over in the UK, um, SkyGo, there's a lot of different streaming services around the world. And if you have found that you haven't been able to get access to some, or your friend on Facebook is talking about, well, in Australia, we're watching this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking it up. I can't find it. I don't get that on my phone. It turns out that it's restricted by where you're coming from. And how do they know where you're coming from? Your ISP told them. So the VPN takes care of that. Let me just show you an example of this. So if uh, I went to ITV's website, and now this is a UK um, service provider of video content, and they have this show, it's called DNA Journey. And it's all about finding your ancestors and your heritage and using DNA. And it sounds really cool. And I really want to watch it. So I go there and I connect through the Dallas server. And this is what I get on my computer. Uh, sorry, this video isn't available right now. Check out our other great programs. Well, it's not going to let me watch any of them because I'm not in the UK. So that's really disappointing. Okay, I could probably pay for another service. I could go pay for BritBox or something else. But that's again, it's one more subscription service on my credit card. And that's where I was saying this actually may pay for itself. Because look at this, if I change my server to the UK, this is what I get a play button. I get to watch. And I did. <laughs> and it's really cool. So there's a lot of content. Do you remember when if you've been doing genealogy for a while, you'll remember way back before who do you think you are was a US show, it was a show first and foremost in the UK. And all of us over here in the US were hearing about it, and we were so excited. And um, you couldn't access it. I think it was through, it had to be through the BBC player, or the iPlayer, I don't know what it was, but you'd go and you'd click and you couldn't watch it because you're in the US and they knew that was your location. All you would have to do with your VPN is switch to the UK. 
Now you can watch it. So let me show you another example. So um, here, now Lacey, my daughter Lacey was here, remember, for about three months after she had her accident and she broke her wrist and she broke her pelvis and she was recuperating here at our house. And she told me, Mom, you got to watch The Great British Baking Show. It's awesome. We have to binge it. I'm like, okay, great. So here in the U.S., if I'm connected to my Dallas server through my VPN, um, we go to Netflix and we see, oh, great, there's all these different seasons of The Great British Baking Show. So if I tell my friend about that in the U.K. and they go to Netflix, they might uh, be on a U.K. server and look, it's not there. Now, they may be able to access that show through some other service that I don't know about. But if I told them, hey, I'm watching this really fun show, we're having a great time, and it's on Netflix, they could pull it up and go, there is no show on Netflix. But if you have a VPN, all you have to do is click the three little dots, and you can switch to the other location. So... I want to share with you one experience I had because I don't want you to be frustrated with this. Uh, overall, it works awesome. But my experience with Amazon was it wasn't working quite the same. I, I have Amazon Prime. I think it's almost expired, but um, I have that. And if you go to Amazon.com to do streaming and watch some of your favorite shows um, and you're on a VPN, it might tell you to turn your VPN off. So... The important thing to know is to try a different server. Some services now will try to block a VPN. Um, but what I did was I jumped on the live chat with ExpressVPN and I found, uh, they told me which server I could go try and sure enough, it worked great. So in the show notes, right after the show, I just it just occurred to me as I'm talking about this, I didn't add the server list. I'm gonna add the server list to the show notes as soon as we're done here with this live show. So if you're watching later, it'll be there when you get there. Um, I'm going to have a list of which servers they told me work really well for Amazon. And right now they're working great for me. So I am not restricted um, simply because I'm using a VPN. And you should not encounter that. And if you ever do, it, if you try a different server and it doesn't work, head over to chat. They'll tell you which ones to get on. Um, however, what I did learn in this process was that Amazon is a little unique they restrict your access by your billing address. So it doesn't do me a lot of good to switch to the UK to try to watch UK content because it says, sorry, I know you live in Texas, that's where you paid for this, you're not getting access. So that is one exception, but don't feel like that the VPN is going to block you from being able to use your streaming services. You can, of course, turn the VPN off anytime you want. One tap, you're off, if you run into any issues, but you should be able to switch servers. And uh, that's true anytime you run into any kind of hiccup. So um, they had told me when I talked to them on customer service, that they're constantly testing the servers and uh, making sure that they have recommended servers. So I'll have that list for you in the show notes. Go check it out, uh, genealogygems.com slash elevenses. And this is episode 56 and you'll have the complete show notes there. And for those of you who are premium members, there is, I think it's a six page uh, downloadable cheat sheet PDF that includes all the step-by-step -step we're talking about ad-free. It's got the list of servers on there too. So we were talking about the layers of protection. So I wanna tell you how to set this up and show you how to do it and we'll do it on different layers. So how I set up ExpressVPN was first thing you do is you go and you get your subscription. As I said, if it's if it comes out around eight bucks a month and you get the 30 days to try it risk free, you might find you're already getting your money's worth simply because it's expanding what you can watch. I mean, I'm all over ITV now <laughs> and I never had access to it. So I love it. I feel like I'm totally getting my money's worth. Um, you can have this on up to five devices, which is really nice. You're not buying a subscription for every device you have. So I was able to put it on everything. And in fact, if you are of the techie inclination, you can put it on your router, which I think, I didn't do it myself, but I believe kind of takes care of your whole house. So that's one option. If you're interested in that, you can look at that over at ExpressVPN. They have it that you can put it on the router. 
So you're going to download the app. So I always kind of start with subscriptions on my computer. So I go in my browser, expressvpn.com slash genealogy gems, get the subscription, and then it will prompt me, hey, you can download it now, the app to your computer. So you're going to want to do that. Okay. Now we're going to install the web browser because you're in a web browser. That's the other layer. So we go to our, our Chrome web store. If you're using Chrome or if you're doing Firefox, go to the store. Look at 14, almost 1,500 um, total star ratings. Really good. Click install and then add extension. So you're in the Chrome web store. I'll have a link in the show notes and you're going to search for ExpressVPN and you're going to install it. And now you can see in my web browser up here in the right hand corner, there's that little squiggly thing that says, I now have ExpressVPN on my browser. So we're going to have two layers. We're going to have the ability to control it and, and uh, control it from the browser level and also from the device level. You don't have to do that on your mobile. You're just going to have the app on your mobile device. So let's sign into the browser extension first and take a look quickly at the um, privacy and security settings. And then you can go, uh, I have a Windows computer, so I would then go into my start menu and I'd search for ExpressVPN to get the app on my computer layer and sign in there as well. They're gonna talk to each other, which is great. So let me click here. We're gonna come up here and click the browser extension that we installed. There's our little picture. I can hear George and Dottie crying out there, my new kittens. Um, and if you go to privacy and security, it's actually not under settings, go to privacy and security and you'll see there's a couple of different options here. I turn these on in the show notes. I've got details. I don't want to bore you and go into it all in this video, but you can read up on what these do for you. And they, one of the, th the nice things is, is it ensures that when you visit a website, if it turns out the link you have is only HTTP, it will get you to the secure version of that website if it's available. So that's kind of a nice extra bonus with the, the browser app or extension, I should say. So we signed up and we clicked it and then we it automatically picked what it thought was the fastest server for us. And with one click of the big round button, it's on. Uh, let's do this on your mobile device, okay? Because you're probably using this just as much as your computer. You go into the app store and you're going to search for ExpressVPN, download the app, open it up on your computer, on your, on your phone, and you'll log in. And then you just, you just tap the connect button and then you can also change the servers. You're going to be looking for those three little dots. Let me show you how this looks like. So we're going to tap ExpressVPN, sign in. Now you got an email when you first got your subscription. So you're gonna enter your email address and the password that you set up when you got the subscription and click sign in. So now we're in, you agree to their terms. You can read, I read through those, I felt okay about them. You can read through them too. Continue, we're gonna allow it to configure, which means to, to route you through this new server. I don't send them the details. You can do that if you want, if you have a crash report. Here's the button. Tap the big connection button. I mean, you can't miss it. So <laughs> I told you, you do not have to be techie. Now notice I'm in Dallas, but I can click the three dots. Now I can pick any server I want. So I could search for a location. Let's say I'm going to search for San Francisco. I found that San Francisco works really well to unblock Amazon. Um, and it switches. It reconnects to San Francisco, and now I'm working through that. Okay, and I like it. It tells me I don't lose which was the smart location that's still there. Let's click the three dots and go to all locations. Now you can kind of um, go through the menus and see what's available. I'm going to go to the UK. There's four different servers over in the UK. Um, Docklands has been working well for me, but you can try different ones. And again, it's going to keep track of whatever the smart recommended server was for fastest connection. It'll show you the last one that you actually were on and then which one you're currently on. So we can just go right back to Dallas for, so if I want to get into ITV, I'm going to switch over to UK, do that. But then I might switch back to Dallas just to keep it fast on throughout the day on a daily basis. 
So you can see, super easy to make changes. So let's recap why I'm using a VPN. I want to be able to use my public Wi-Fi safely and not burn up my battery or my cell data. I want my privacy whenever I can possibly get it, my hands on it. So I don't want to be tracked by my ISP. I don't want them handing over information about what I'm doing. Uh, number three was I want the best deals when I'm online shopping. That kind of irritates me that I might not be getting the best deal. So I want to make sure that I can do that and get a whole lot more out of the subscriptions. Who knew what a what a bonus this was. I was kind of just striving for security and privacy. And now I'm watching DNA shows and other things that I really like. So um, we can access that regionally specific content. Let's do a real quick overview on how you get started. Okay, so you go and you get your subscription. Thank you so much. If you do use ExpressVPN, thank you for using our link. Uh, if you use my checklist, if you want to pick a different one, um, you're going to get the three months free. And we're going to download the app from the VPN to our computer and we'll sign in because they're going to send you a confirmation email and you're going to have signed up for a password. Then you're going to go over to your phone or your tablet and you are going to download the app from the app store. Sign in there too. You got to tell it who you are. And then we're going to install that web browser extension because that's the other layer that we're working in. And we're going to log in there. Be sure and check out the show notes because that's where we're going to have um, all the step by step on this. You'll have the checklist on what you're looking for. Those of you who are premium members, thank you for being premium members and do download the cheat sheet as well. So we're going to pop over here to chat and uh, let me take a quick look. So question, I may have missed this, but how long is the Express VPN deal good for? Um, they, they have not put an expiration. They've done this just for us. So as an affiliate now with them, they've made this the URL is, is our URL exclusively and you can use it. So feel free and give it a try and see what the 30 days is like. I think you'll, you'll really like it. But right now there is no expiration on that, which is really nice. And you can share it with your friends too. They don't have to watch this show, but what the heck. One subscription to all devices. Yes, Kelly, up to five devices. For me, I didn't have more than that, so that was good. Um, and Bill ran in here and handed me a note. Asked why YouTube asked for her birthday. Oh, okay, so Sandy wanted to know, why is YouTube asking what my birthday is, just so I can participate in chat? It asks your birthday because it wants to be sure that you are somebody over the age of 13. They don't allow children to just jump onto live streaming like we're doing right now for this video and start giving away the family secrets. So all they're really trying to do is find out that you're not over the age of 13. So just tell them that. Um, let's see here. Does this work for your devices and your husband's as well? Yes. So Cynthia, if you have, um, in fact, we did this. So I set it up on my two computers and my phone and my tablet. And then I ran and I grabbed Bill's phone and he's like, no, I don't, cause he's not a techie guy. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to get into something new that's tech. I just downloaded it, turned it on. I said, you're good to go. He never has to do anything with it. He's not likely to ever change his server to watch something else, but he'll let me stream my phone on the, on the smart TV to do that. So, um, how are we doing on time? We're not doing too bad on time. Let me look really quick on the chat over here. Where am I? I'll go to my, my browser and see what else you guys, if I have questions. Thank you so much for putting your questions in the big capital letters. Uh, can you use a VPN for your email? So Joe, the beauty of this is, is that you're doing your email typically through a web browser, through your device. So if your device is covered, your email's covered. You don't have to do it separately. Okay. Good question. Um, there was another one. Does you do, using a VPN slow down your computer or device that is cause a notable, notable difference or a lag? Um, I tested this. The, the only time I saw a lag was when I tried a German server and um, I didn't try too many different countries, but UK, fast. I did do one in Germany. It slowed down a little bit. So um, my understanding is the farther away the server is the more likely it is to slow down. So uh, if you were using, you know, a server in, I don't know where, 
uh, Indonesia, <laughs> it's, it's going to be slower than the UK would be maybe or that Canada would be. So, but again, if your ISP is throttling you or throttling your streaming, you might find actually being on the VPN is going to be faster for you. Uh, let's see here. What else we've got? You guys have really good questions. I think that's, I'm going to go back down to the bottom. Um, okay, so we're getting a question. I understand how the VPN would encrypt on your computer's end. How does it encrypt on the other end of the tunnel? Um, I don't know specifically. I do know that ExpressVPN has a page talking about the whole tunneling thing and the encryption in very specific terms. But it's almost like, think of it as when it comes out the other end, it's kind of released when it hits the destination. And that tunnel is all the way up to the destination. So if you're trying to send banking information to a banking website, it isn't until the moment it, it exits the tunnel, their tunnel, and hits that website, it, it knows now it's open because there is no tunnel, right? It's out of the encryption. So it's hit the website you're trying to go to. It's going to be then available for them to see. That's, that's the plain English version of that. Um, how does it open it? I don't know. I think it's a programming thing how that whole thing happens. Um, oh, look, I remember seeing a page dedicated to a full explanation over at ExpressVPN about the technology behind how the whole encryption thing works. I know AES, uh, two, I think it's 256, is super well known in the industry and it has a whole programming mechanism of itself that, that accomplishes all of this. So, um, hey, I hope you've enjoyed this. I know it's not, you know, how to research a particular kind of genealogy record, but my thought is we are doing stuff online and whether it's genealogy or anything else, I just want to make sure that you and I are both as private and secure as we can be. And I really feel like this is a great layer for that. Plus, um, it also just gives you some extra benefits that who knew but kind of pays for itself. So I kind of like that. If you've enjoyed this, will you do me a favor? Do a quick thumbs up um, on the video. And right now I am going to go, I don't even know that I pinned it. Let me look here. If you want to go to uh, the show notes, you go to genealogygems.com slash 11s. I have just copied the link and I am just pasting it. Look how multitasking I am. And there it is. So it's in the bottom of the chat for those of you here in the live chat. And of course, I will have the link to the show notes uh, down in the video description here on YouTube. Um, that's it for now. Oh, take a quick swig. Do you have an official mug yet? It helps explain your schedule that we do breakfast genealogy, 11s is lunch, genealogy, dinner, genealogy. And oh, you didn't meet George last week. So <laughs> thank you, Bill. <laughs> this is George. Georgie Porgy, right? Oh, Trouble. Trouble. Yeah, he's a purr. He's a purr. These guys have brought such joy into our lives. I, I don't know if I, I told you, but we, um, you know, we lost our two dogs this last year. They were both over 16 years old. And we had a cat, Ginger, who was over 16. And when we lost her about two months ago, I just couldn't even bring myself to tell you about it without sure that I would fall apart and start crying on the show. <laughs> um, we got her on um, a big adventure we went on. We did a long time ago, 15, 16 years ago, we did a TV show. And um, we got the cat on that TV show, brought her home and enjoyed her. And she loved us up to death. And then she passed away very suddenly. So we just brought ourselves just recently to bring these guys home. So you met Dottie last week. This is George. And uh, they brought us a great deal of joy. I hope this show brings you just a little bit of joy. It brings me a lot of joy to do it. And um, I so appreciate. Yeah, George of the Jungle. I always think of, um, I will love him and squeeze him and I will call him George. I think that's Looney Tunes. Okay, my friends, where are we? I need to go over here. With that... Thank you so much for watching, my friend. I will talk to you next week. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.